What's going on fam? This is Raul from QBN Kennel. Today we're going to be talking about kennel blindness and what you can do to not have it. That's one of the worst things that you could have is not be objective or being your own worst critic. Okay? If you're able to see your dog's flaws before anybody else tells you, that's the position you want to be. The last thing you want to do is to be the last person to figure out that your dog is east-west. So we're going to get to it today. We're going to break a couple of things down. I'm going to show you what I do with dogs that don't meet standards in my yard. First thing we're going to be looking at is that she is not cow hawked. Also, I'm going to be looking at the rear angulation. As you can see, she has proper rear angulation. Harmony of the dog. Now look at her front feet, how they naturally set when I call to her attention. See how they're not east-west? You see how she is in complete harmony? Her top line is, is where it needs to be. Um, again, I'm calling her attention head up or head down. Everything looks harmonious. The movements are harmonious. Again, look at her front feet. Look how she sets. She's going to look down. And I do this on purpose to see if she resets her feet and she doesn't. Then we bring her up. And then you can see she's still set correctly. Uh, that's what we're uh, looking for. Now, again, there she goes. She sets. Again, I move her. This is on real time. Again, look at her front feet and she sets. Now we're going to show you a dog that we just classified as pet quality. As you can see, she, she's a pup that's been loved, and it's a pup that has a lot of love to give. So I want you to be able to differentiate the pup or the dog from being able to produce. It's two different things. Um, I could give you an example. You could have a brother, uh, you know, you love him to death, but he's just not a good basketball player. Just because he's not going to make it to the NBA doesn't mean he can't be a good brother. Same thing could be said about your dogs. You just have to be able to differentiate if they could be bred or if they could just be pets. And being objective is key. We're, we're going to objectively take a look at Roma and look at her natural stance. She is east-west. Just natural for her. Um, there she goes again. It's not a slight east-west. It's a full east-west. Uh, her movement is not as harmonious. It isn't too bad, uh, but her main other flaw is that she has an underbite, and therefore we have two major flaws, one in her underbite and the other one in her east-west, um, and that for us uh, automatically classifies her as uh, pet quality. Uh, I know that it's a slight underbite, but it's an underbite nonetheless, and she shouldn't be bred. Again, look at the natural position of her feet. Uh, due to weak pasterns, she is east-west. Um, you know, those are two major flaws. Uh, also, her tail we'll be seeing here momentarily. Uh, she has a slight flaw. She has too gay of a tail. And uh, therefore, you know, she, she's a perfectly good dog um, as pet quality, but not necessarily for breeding. Fam, I understand that it can be real difficult, especially if you're a new breeder, uh, to be able to identify a dog that you've produced that is of pet quality. Uh, the more that you get knowledge and, and the more that you get into it, you'll be able to realize that a dog's pet quality because you'll be able to see two major flaws and even a slight flaw or even a third flaw uh, in your production. The minute you see that, immediately you need to tag it as pet quality and be able to sell it as such two reasons. First reason is you don't want to reproduce through that dog because it's going to be reproducing these flaws over and over again for you. Secondly, you decide to go ahead and sell this pup because you figured you've invested too many resources in it or whatnot and you sell it to somebody say for two or three thousand dollars and they realize that what you sold them is pet quality. Uh, let's just say that's one of the main reasons why a lot of kennels fold within the, the first three to five years is because they practice this and in the long run it's just going to catch up to you as you can see fam this girl none but love she loves to be petted she loves to play she has great temperament so if you're in the market for a pet quality pup as i've been asked as of late by just about every single day i've been getting messages as to when are you going to produce pet quality well fam let me let me just let you know from the very beginning a pet quality dog is something that is not done on purpose. It actually just comes out that way uh, because we're dealing with genetics and we're dealing with probabilities, okay? Again, there's nothing wrong with this dog. This dog could walk, run, have fun, and whatnot. But as far as for breeding is concerned, 
is a dog that just, that's not the type of quality that we want to be able to provide uh, to our paying customers that are putting their faith in our brand to produce the very best. Um, but with that being said, she could definitely um, be somebody's pet and, and, you know, provide that home with that happy feeling of having a, a good, wonderful dog that's, that has great temperament and that, you know, it's just simply overall fun to be around and that can provide you with even, you know, uh, protection at some point. I'm going to give you a little bit of background as to why we kept her. Uh, when she was born, I did notice that she had a slight underbite. I mean, very minuscule, as, as you guys can see. Uh, but with that being said, um, you know, we felt if we give it some time, we want to see how this bloodline uh, actually develops over time. You're going to notice that there are going to be uh, things that you see when a puppy's eight, 10, or even 12 weeks old that, you know, actually disappears with time, you know, at six, eight, 10, or 12 months. And the same could be said the other way around. There may be things that the dog doesn't show when it's young, you know, at eight or 10 or 12 weeks, but still being young at six, eight, or 10 or 12 months, it starts showing you um, other faults and other attributes. So, you know, we kind of held on to her. We just wanted to see what was going to come out of it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's, it, you know, I'm not going to be able to use her uh, for breed quality. With that being said, this dog as a being does not lose any value as far as QBNK is concerned. We're still going to screen our customer and make sure that you send me in, um, whether it's your lease or, you know, wherever you're living making sure that you're able to have this dog. The last thing that I want to do is because she is of pet quality, just get rid of her and sell it to the first person coming along. Uh, you need to provide me with information and I gotta, I gotta get that good fuzzy feeling that my puppy's gonna be well taken care of, you know, in your home and for years to come. Uh, I don't want to send my dog into a situation that a year or two from now, um, you know, has to be rehomed or has to be moved or whatever the case may be. Um, fam, as breeders, we owe it to our dogs, first and foremost, to make sure that we find them, you know, happy forever homes, um, that they could actually, you know, uh, mesh into and become part of the family. If you don't get that warm, fuzzy feeling, uh, you're, you're in, you know, and you still sell the dog, you're in, you're in the wrong line of work, man. You're, you're you know, you, you need to, get out of breeding dogs because it's first and foremost about them and then it's about everything else. Just make sure you keep that in mind. Yeah, right, baby. Fam, it's always a hard thing uh, to do because it's usually a potential of lost income, but think about it this way. Uh, you need to be ethical with those people that are putting their money uh, behind your brand. The last thing you want to do is to make an, an, an extra buck here or there uh, to go ahead and start uh, selling these pet quality dogs and then find yourself in a pickle uh, when people start posting this or you know the things that you've done online and you know you can't refute it uh, people start questioning your brand all in all it's not the way to go about and doing the right thing so do the right thing from the very get whenever you see any one of your pups with two major flaws and maybe even a minor or even a third flaw go ahead and uh, make them pet quality move on from them uh, trust you me in the future it's gonna pay off for you